All right. Hi, Jamie. After you finished college, you served as a lieutenant in the Navy and traveled around the world. Why did you make the jump from military man to actor? Why did I make the jump from military man to actor? Um, it was just something else that I, uh, that I wanted to pursue. I had done the Navy thing, and uh, it was great. I enjoyed my time in. I served five years. Uh, I traveled the world. And I was, I was always looking for the next challenge. And so um, I think I'd always wanted to act and always was the funny guy. So when I got out, I got a job bartending. And we were right across the street from the Improv really famous comedy club uh, in San Diego. And I would go in and see the shows, and I ended up jumping up and, and starting to do stand-up and sketch. And uh, then I auditioned. Somebody said, hey, there's a commercial audition or something, and I, I booked it. I was in a SeaWorld commercial, and then I did a Renegade episode with Lorenzo Lamas. I did a Vanishing Sun, all this work in San Diego. And then I was like, all right, well, let's take the leap. And so I went for L.A., and I thought, this is going to be the easiest business ever. And then it took a little while to get started. But all of a sudden, I, uh, I started to take off. I did a lot of theater and then ended up booking shows, Friends, King of Queens, Will and Grace, and then uh, played series regular on My Boys and fell into it that way. And then fell into hosting and fell into voiceover and, and a lot of other parts of the world. When you said it, you're probably best known for your comedic parts on TV shows, uh, My Boys and Will and Grace. What qualities do you have that make you a natural, that make you a natural for funny guy roles? My father was a funny guy, and I remember always he was, in, you know, we're Boston. We're smart asses, I guess, is the, is the term. But I'm a redhead, and I think it was also a way to, to uh, defer violence as a youth. Because when you're a redhead, uh, bullies, bullies see you. You're like the red cape in a bullfight or the center cork in a dartboard. People are aiming for you. So I feel like I always had a smart ass sense of humor, um, and I had a sharp tongue to kind of maybe get myself out of uh, – dangerous situations as a child what current comedy or drama i'm not trying to put you in a box here would you like to guest on no <laughs> so many so many what do i what do i like comedy or drama well we just watched the night of which i thought the acting was brilliant and there's so many good shows on tv I don't want to. I, I, I wouldn't even know what to say. I end up, I've watched so many Stranger Things we just watched on Netflix would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, I'm open for all kinds of work, so I'll guess on, uh, I'll guess on whatever they got. The comedy is clearly your thing in lots of ways, but it's not your only thing. How did you become the host of America Facts versus Fiction? Uh, it was just a fortuitous um, meeting with my, my manager had... Uh, gotten some interest from AHC and from the guys at Workaholic Productions. And so we all met. And um, when they pitched me the show, I was like, this, is, this sounds fantastic, because I love history. And I honestly, when I went to go shoot the show, thought that I would be like, yeah, I knew this, I knew this, I knew this. Yeah, I got it all. I knew it. But uh, every single episode so far, I've been like, really? I had no idea that happened. Um, so it's been... It's been just a really fun few years of doing this show. It's, it's been really great people at AHC and Workaholic, and it's just a fun environment to do the show. Now, America Facts vs. Fiction is starting its second season on America Hero, American Heroes Channel. Give me a quick primer on its premise. I'm actually, I, don't, I hate to correct you, but it's, gonna, it's the fourth. Do you want to do the question ah, again? Sure. I guess it does. I forget that you're not going to be on the answer. Yeah, exactly. It's just a generic thing. <laughs> Yeah, but um, let's go it's ahead. And, let's starting go, let's, with fourth let me... season, but this is just a marathon of it. Perfect. Give me a quick primer on its premise. The premise of the show, America Facts versus Fiction, is that you think you know history. We even lay it out at the top of the show. Here's what you think happened during whatever it was, during the gold rush or during the gangster era or during Prohibition or during – the Depression, or during World War I. Here's the story we all have been told. And then we break it down to go, actually, here's how it really happened. So as it goes through, it's kind of really fun for the audience, too, because we'll say something and we'll go, is that a fact or a fiction? And it's always, even I'm surprised. I'm like, really? That's true? I had no idea that was true. So that's, that's the premise. And it, it's all done in kind of a fun tone. Uh, we don't take our t ourselves too seriously. We act a little goofy. Uh, we make a lot of jokes at it, and um, and it's just a wonderful environment. 
What are a few common misconceptions that people may have about U.S. history that you can share with us? Oof, there's so many. Mis what misconceptions can we share about American history? Well, every show has misconceptions on it. I, I mean, from our pilot episode where it was Paul Revere's ride, we find out that Paul Revere actually got arrested and didn't finish the ride, and that it was Dawes and Prescott who finished the ride, uh, and that he would have never said the British are coming because they were all British at the time. So there's always stuff like that. But whether we cover the gold rush, um, prohibition, it wasn't illegal to drink. It was illegal to make and sell alcohol. So if you had it, you could drink it. And some people did have some left over that they kind of partitioned out. Um, we did one on Fort Knox. Uh, Empire State Building actually was a landing port for dirigibles, for blimps. And they actually landed one blimp at the very top of the Empire State Building at the spire. And people had to walk across a gangplank in like 50 mile an hour wind. And they did it once before they realized that was a terrible idea. What do you enjoy most about hosting America, facts versus fiction? Um, I just love doing the show. It's so, I mean, it's ridiculously easy. We, everyone has such a good time. And I think what I love most about it is actually um, kind of taking the viewer on a journey of history in such a fun way. Like AHC has given us um, this free reign to kind of make learning fun. So you forget that you're learning stuff because it's really more of like, a, you know, it's a drama comedy show where we kind of take you through these events in history. But in, in the meantime, you actually are learning about history. So it's, it's kind of the best of both worlds. Where has the show not yet taken you that you'd like to visit? Oh, that's so funny. Uh, it's such a great question. Where has the show taken me? Uh, where, uh, that's, that's such a great question. Where would we like the show to go that we haven't done yet? People call. Who? My mother just. My mother will write down ones and send them to me. Who did she just send? I forget who it was now. My mother, my mother will go like, I want to learn about this. I can't even remember. Oh, it's going to drive me crazy. We'll come back. Wait, to come back to that because okay. I can't remember <laughs> who haven't we done yet that we thought would be great. I can't All right. Remember. In addition to your hosting duties, what else do you have coming up? Well, I uh, am touring doing stand up right now, um, and I have a show on uh, YouTube called Dads and Parks that I make because I'm a new father, and I have a podcast on uh, Earwolf and Howl called Father Time. And then I'm always out uh, shooting more shows and, and, uh, and, and making more uh, uh, guest appearances on stuff. So, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, the actor's lifestyle. Actually, right. most days I try to play as much golf as humanly possible when I'm not working. <laughs> All right, lastly, three random questions. Yes. What's the, what's the first item on your bucket list? Uh, well, I feel like I've done so much, and I have two little babies now that I'm enjoying being home with and just doing the simple things. So I would say I really only have one thing left on my bucket list, and it's pretty much every night just to sit in a jacuzzi listening to Peter Gabriel with a, a nice glass of Pinot Noir. I think, is that a bucket list item? Is that, that, that feels like a bucket list item, right? <laughs> What um, would you ever do dancing with the stars? I would do it in a heartbeat. I'd be the first guy kicked off, but I would gladly go in. I would love to learn to dance, of course. That sounds like a lot of fun. I, uh, I would be terrible. The only dance I know is that like 80s John Cryer dance. Did they ever do that on the show? <laughs> it's always like me to the cure, like, show me, show me, show me how you do that trick. And then they'd go, you're out. Episode one, you're done. And lastly, what's your favorite way or how, what's your favorite way to spend a Friday night? Well, it used to be going out and, and visiting with friends and maybe some karaoke. I like karaoke. Uh, but now with the two babies, um, my favorite way to spend a Friday night is to uh, put them to bed and then just to sit quietly and stare off into the distance for an hour or two and let, the, let everything calm down. I have babies. I have an 18-month-old and a three-year-old, so I'm exhausted. Uh, I like to I like to watch a movie. I like uh, I like to sit quietly and watch a movie.
I'm so old and lame. What happened to me? I used to be fun. I used to party and see the world. The days are over. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate right. your time. You got it. Thank you.